Welcome back, and we're going to be continuing uh, learning about integer exponents and how to do a bunch of manipulations like the, the power rule, the product rule, the quotient rule, and so on. This time, uh, we're going to look at some new rules, particularly looking at negative exponents and how we handle those. So this is section uh, 4.2. And that is going to be integer exponents. Okay, integer exponents and the quotient rule. My pen's acting up a little bit. Quotient rule. Okay. All right, so let's do a quick review from the other day. Um, what did we, or not the other day, but maybe the last lecture, what did, we, um, what did we have? So we have the product rule. And remember that was x to the n times x to the m. And then remember, you, remember that you just add the exponents. So that would be x to the n plus m. And remember that all of these rules, the bases, are going to be the same when you use the product rule and, uh, for that matter, the quotient rule. Okay? So remember we also had the power rule. Okay? That was x to the n raised to the m power and you multiplied the exponents. So that would be x to the n m. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So then we also had the power of a product. All right. And remember that was x times y raised to the n power, and that's going to be x to the n, y to the n. And remember that if you don't have an exponent on the variable, it's assumed to be 1, right? So that's just n times 1 and then n times 1, okay? Then I expanded on that a little bit, okay? And let's just write this as x to some power, let's say n, and x, sorry, and y to the m power, and then that was raised to the p power. Well, we're still going to multiply the exponent, so that would be x to the n times p, so np, and y, multiply the exponents, that's m times p, all right? Then we had our quotient rule. Quotient rule. Right? And that was x, don't need that grouping symbol, x to the n power over y to the m power. So that's just going to be subtracting the exponents. So that's x to the n minus m. All right? And we also had a power of a quotient. All right? Whoa, what happened here? power of quotient, and that's going to be x over y to the n power, and that's simply going to be x to the n over y to the n. Remember that you have a 1 on the, or a 1 for the exponent on the x and on the y. Okay, so you're just multiplying n times 1 and n times 1 there. Now, if I expanded that, <coughs> excuse me, and made it a little 
or made the uh, powers different. So we had x to the n divided by y to the m. And let's raise that to the p power. Again, that's just going to be x to the np divided by y to the mp. See, we're multiplying, again, the exponents here. When you're raising one exponent to another one, and that just basically is the power rule, right? We're just putting it in the form of a um, uh, product like we have right down here and like we have right down here that we just did, right here, okay? All right, so <clears throat> let's introduce um, a couple things that are new. First of all, x to the zero power is one. In fact, any variable or any value to the zero power is always gonna be one. So I could say two to the zero power is one, um, 35.6 to the zero power is one, uh, two thirds to the zero power is one, Okay, well, why is that? I mean, that should kind of make sense. Imagine if I had, let's say, x to the fifth over x to the fifth, right? Well, you know that these just divide out, and this is equal to 1, right? But let's take this a step further. This x to the fifth over x to the fifth, we know we're going to use the quotient rule, right? So that's going to be x to the... 5 minus 5, right, which is x to the 0 power, and of course we also know that x to the 5th divided by x to the 5th we know is just 1, so this here we know is 1, so we know that 1 is equal to x to the 0, okay? <coughs> Excuse me, so this rule you want to remember, anything to the zero power is one. In fact, we can make sort of a generic rule and say anything so anything raised to the zero power is equal to one. All right? Okay, so another rule that's new is going to be um, negative exponents. So remember how I mentioned before that we were just dealing with positive exponents and the exponent in the numerator was greater than the exponent in the denominator for the previous section in 4.1? Well this one it isn't, so we'd still do the same thing. This is going to be x to the 5 subtract 8, right? just using the quotient rule. But this gives you x to the negative 3. All right? So a rule of thumb in mathematics is we don't want to leave our exponents negative. Or don't leave the result with negative exponents. All right. So there's a rule that we can deal with this. And that says that x to the negative n equals 1 over x to the n power. So it's a real simple rule. If I have x to the negative 3, like we just did in our previous result, this could equal to 1 over x cubed. Now, notice that the exponent here, well, actually this is the exponent, is positive. Okay? Um, let's take a look at this. Let's say I have x to the minus 3 over, let's say, y to the fifth, okay? If we were to apply this rule, 
we'd have to write x to the negative 3 as 1 over x to the 3, right? And then that's all over y to the 5th, okay? Now this is like dividing fractions. This is y to the 5th over 1. So remember when you divide fractions, you invert and multiply. So this is 1 over x cubed times the reciprocal, so that's 1 over y to the 5th, and this equals 1 times 1, which is 1, and x cubed times y to the 5th is x cubed y to the 5th. All right? <clears throat> Oops. Something's going on here. There we go. All right. So now I want you to take a look at this and look at the result. And can you see anything unique here? Well, I can see one thing. And that is that this x to the negative 3 came down to the denominator as a positive exponent. Okay? You can see it right here. Well, listen to what I said. x to, neg to the negative 3 in the numerator came down to the denominator as x to the positive 3. Hmm. Well, let's check something out. Let's, let's reverse this. Let's say I had y to the fifth over x to the negative three. So now the, ne the uh, negative exponent is in the denominator. Well, let's apply our rule. <clears throat> so that says y to the fifth all over one over x to the third. Okay, so we're going to invert and multiply. So that's just y to the fifth over one, right? times the reciprocal, x cubed over 1. So that's going to be y to the fifth x cubed. Of course, 1 times 1 is 1. We don't need to write the 1 over here. But look at this now. Look what happened at x to the minus 3. x to the minus 3, and I'll just put the 1 down here for the sake of showing it as a quotient. x to the minus 3 came up to the numerator as a positive exponent. So it looks like we could actually say that a negative exponent in the numerator can become a positive exponent in the denominator. And then over here, a negative exponent in the denominator can become a positive exponent in the numerator. All right, And the reason why that works is just because the rule x to the minus n is equal to 1 over x to the n. So instead of having to write this out the long way, let, let's just say I had a problem that said x to the negative third over y to the negative 2. Well, then we could just write this as the x to the minus 3 is going to come down to the denominator as a positive x to the third power. And a y to the minus 2 power goes to the numerator as a positive exponent. So y to the second power. Okay? So instead of writing this as, you know, 1 over x cubed divided by 1 over y squared, and then we invert and multiply... Okay, this becomes y squared all over x cubed. And look, these are exactly the same. Okay, so let me repeat that again. A negative exponent in the numerator can be written as a positive exponent in the denominator, and a negative exponent in the denominator can be written as a positive exponent in the numerator, okay? Which leads to our last rule, which is actually very handy, okay? And that is um, these two rules. So if we have x to the minus n over x to the minus m, I'm sorry, y, 
the y to the minus m power, what did we say? Well, we could write this as x to the positive n and y to the positive m. Okay? So the negative exponent here became a positive, or the negative exponent in the numerator became a positive exponent in the denominator, and a negative exponent in the denominator became a positive exponent in the numerator. Okay? So make it nice again. This is the actual rule. another rule to remember. And the same thing for this. I won't get into the details of it, but basically let's write this. Let's say I have x over y to the minus n. Okay? That equals to y over x. So you just write the reciprocal and this becomes a positive exponent. Okay? And I guess I'll just do it for you guys. I know how much you love math. Um, I'll show you why this works. So let's just do this. So this could be written as 1 over x over y to the positive n, right? That's just following our negative exponent rule. And then we will use our power rule for quotient. So that's 1 over x to the n um, y to the n, then we'll invert and multiply, so that's 1 times y to the nth power over x to the nth power, and that's simply y to the n over x to the n. Well, notice that these exponents are the same, so we can write this as just y over x to the n power. And you can see these are exactly the same. All right? So the rule that I want you to remember is right here. Okay? All right. <clears throat> and I don't think I mentioned this, but remember from before, if you have just a regular uh, power or a number, let's say 2, these can be written to the first power, right? Okay, so there's all these rules that we have. Again, I would write all of these down now on a sheet of paper and have them as a reference as you work out your homework um, and just memorize them, okay? So let me tell you, these, <coughs> excuse me, these power rules are going to follow you in your, you know, intermediate algebra, college algebra, calculus, and if you go even further than that, okay, very important. All right, so let's go ahead and work some problems out. So let's say we want to simplify. All right. All right, let's simplify. 3 eighths to the negative 1. Well, let's apply that rule. We can go ahead and just take the reciprocal, 8 thirds and write it to the first power. And of course, 8 to the first power is 8, and 3 to the first power is just 3. Okay? Now, if I change this up a little bit, let's do x over 2 to the negative 3 power. Well, that's going to be 2 over x to the positive 3 power. So that's going to be 2 cubed over x cubed, and 2 cubed we know is 8, and that's over x cubed. All right? Oh, how about 5x to the minus 4? We want to simplify that. Well, remember, this is a negative exponent in the numerator, so it becomes a positive exponent in the denominator. So that would just be 5 over x to the fourth power. Okay. All right. How about this one? Let's add 2 
to the negative 3 power plus 4 to the negative 1 power. You might think, oh, I don't know how to do that. What do I do? Well, you just follow the rules. So 2 to the negative 3 is 1 over 2 cubed, right? We're using x to the minus n equals 1 over x to the n, okay? And then we add that to 4 to the negative 1 is 1 over 4 to the first power, right? So that's going to be 1 over 2 cubed is 8 plus 1 over 4. Let's get our common denominator, which is 8. So we're going to multiply by 2 over 2. So that's going to be 1 8 plus 2 8 equals 3 8. All right? Okay, let's go down do some more examples. Okay, <clears throat> let's see here. Um, let's do this one. There's a difference between minus 4 or the opposite of 4 raised to the minus 2 power and then negative 4 so the negative and the 4 is being raised to the minus 2 power. Remember what the difference is? Here the 4 is being raised to the minus 2. Okay? Whoops. What happened there? Boy. There we go. That was very weird. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, let's say that again. So in this case, the 4 is being raised to the minus 2. And here, the negative 4 is being raised to the minus 2 power. So how we would handle this, this would just be the opposite of, and then 4 to the minus 2 is 1 over 4 squared. So this would be negative 1 over 16. Now this one is going to be um, 1 over negative 4 to the second power. So notice the parentheses here, okay? So negative 4 squared is a positive 16. So this is 1 over 16. So it's kind of like, what's the difference between minus 2 to the second power, or the opposite of 2 to the second power, and then minus 2 to the second power, right? Sorry, let's erase this. This is minus 2 to the second power. Remember we had this in the beginning of the semester. This is equal to minus 4 and this is equal to plus 4. So here we have parentheses, here we have no parentheses. Okay? Alright, let's look at some more simplifying here. How about negative 4 d to the negative 1 p to the negative 10. Alright? That's easy. Okay? Remember, negative exponents in the numerator come to the denominator as positive exponents. So this is just d to the first power. And again, you don't have to put the first power there. Alright? Uh, the negative 4 just stays there. Just, there's no negative exponent to it. It's just a negative number. And then p to the negative 10 is in the denominator, so it comes to the numerator as p to the 10th power. So this is the answer, right there. And then I, I would recommend just writing it like this, minus 4p to the 10th over d. You don't need to put d to the first power, okay? All right, how about <coughs> this problem right here? t cubed over t to the 8. Well, 
This is t to the 3 subtract 8, which is t to the negative 5. And remember, we do not want to leave our answer with a negative exponent. So we use our rule, and, and that says that's going to be 1 over t to the 5th. Okay? Uh, how about this? What if I had t to the minus 3 over t to the minus 8? Okay? There's a couple ways we could do this. Um, in fact, let me let me change this. So I'll make this a little different. Um, let's do t to the third over t to the minus eight. Okay, like that. So this is just t cubed times. Remember, this goes up to the numerator now, so it's going to be a t to the eighth power, a positive eight, right? And then now we just use our product rule, so we add these two exponents together. So that's t to the 11th. 8 plus 3 is 11. Okay? All right. How about this? 6s to the 4th, t to the negative 7, and that's all raised to the second power. Okay, so we're going to use the uh, power rule. So that says that that's going to be 6 to the second power, right? Because there's a, really a 1 there. So it's 6 to the 2 times 1, so it's 6 to the second. And then s, well, that's 4 times 2, so that's s to the 8th. And then t to the negative 7 times 2, that's just going to be t to the negative 14. Right? So now, the only thing we need to do is get rid of this negative exponent by making it a positive exponent. So that's simply going to be 6 squared, which is 36. So you want to simplify that. S to the 8, and then write that in the denominator as t to the 14th. Okay? All right. Let's look at another example. <clears throat> Let's say we have, let's see if I can trick you on this one, minus 3a squared b to the fifth over 5a to the minus 3 raised to the zero power. Okay, quick, 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 what's the answer? What's the answer? What's the answer? You should know it. You should know it. Remember, it's just 1. Anything to the 0 power is 1. <laughs> All right. Let's look at another one. So let's see. We have um, this one. Okay, this is kind of interesting. So let's say we have x to the minus 5th. And we have x to the minus 9th. And then we have a to the minus 8. Or not a, but x. So right there. Let's change that. x to the negative 8. OK, well, there's a lot of different ways you could do this. Um, let's just simplify the numerator first. OK? So this is just the product rule. So the base is x, and then we're just going to add these two exponents together. So minus 5 added to minus 9 is going to be minus 14, right? And that's all over x to the minus 8. Okay. Now we, we have, again, the same base right here. So we could use the quotient rule. So we can just subtract. So we know the base is x. It's minus 14, subtract negative 8, okay, which makes this x to the negative 14 plus 8, and that's going to be x to the minus 6, okay. Now, are we done yet? 
Not quite, because remember we do not want to leave this as a negative exponent. So we'll write down as 1 over x to the 6th power. Okay? All right. <clears throat> let's go ahead and uh, let's see. Let's look at this one. So we have c cubed d to the minus fourth over c to the negative one d to the fifth, and that's all raised to the minus three power. Okay? All right, now there's actually quite a few ways you can work this out. There's really no right or wrong way. There may be a more efficient way, okay? Um, the first thing that I would do is maybe work on the inside, like in here, okay? And if we did that, we can see that we have some negative exponents, right? So let's make them positive. So this is going to be c cubed. And then c to the negative 1 is in the denominator, so it'll become a c to the first power in the numerator, right? Then we have a d to the negative fourth, so that will come down here as a positive d to the fourth. And then remember we have a d to the fifth, right? Okay. And that's still raised to the minus 3. So I'm still going to simplify in here, okay? So we could use our product rule. So c cubed times c to the first is c to the fourth, right? 3 plus 1 is 4. And then d to the fourth times d to the fifth, again our product rule, so that's d to the ninth, right? And then we have that raised to the minus 3. Now, we could use that one rule where we just take the reciprocal. So that's just going to be d to the ninth over c to the fourth, and then that's raised to the positive three, right? Four there. Okay. And now we simplify, so we have our power rule, so that's d to the nine times three is twenty-seven, all over c to the four times three, which is twelve. So c to the 12th power. So d to the 27th uh, over c to the 12th. Okay? Now, just for the heck of it, let's take a different approach to this. Okay? Let's take a different approach. Again, there's a lot of different ways we could do this. So, from the beginning here, I'm going to write this right away, is how about if I just take the reciprocal right away? So whatever's in the numerator comes to the denominator. In. And it has to it has to stay the same uh, powers, okay? You don't change the sign or anything. So what I'm, what I'm using, remember, is just x over y to the minus n is x, uh, is, uh, sorry, y over x to the n. Just take the reciprocal, change the uh, power. Okay, so that means room so you can see. That means that we're going to have c to the minus one, d to the fifth over c cubed, d to the minus four. All right, and then that's all raised to now a positive three. Right? Okay. So let's, let's take another uh, different approach here. Let's not even work what's on the inside. Let's just go right away and use the power rule. So I'm going to be multiplying this power times that, this power times that, this power times that, and then this power times that. Okay? So I'm not breaking any rules. I'm just working the problem differently than I had previously. So this is going to be c to the minus 3, d to the 15th, 
over c to the 9th d to the minus 12. Okay? All right. And let's use our rule that says a negative exponent in the denominator becomes a positive exponent in the numerator, and a negative exponent in the numerator becomes a positive exponent in the denominator. So basically what's going to happen is this will come down here, and this will go up here, but with a change in sign on the exponent, right? So let's write this as d to the 12th, and then d to the 15th over c cubed times c to the 9th, okay? Well, now we're going to use the product rule. So 12 plus 15 is 27. So that's d to the 27 over, and then 3 plus 9 is 12, so c to the 12th. And I'll be darned, look at this, and look at this. We have exactly the same result. Even though we approached it differently, we still used our rules for exponents and we come up with uh, the same answer. So my advice to you now, because you don't have a lot of experience in this, do whatever rule you feel more comfortable with and then once you start seeing these little shortcuts or different ways to approach it, then you can apply those, okay? But do whatever you um, feel more confident with, all right? Okay, let's see. Um, how about this problem? 2u to negative 2 power v to the fifth, and that's all raised to the fifth power. Okay. Well, that's 2 to the fifth, and then u to the negative 10, right, because we're multiplying here, and then we multiplied, remember, there's a really an exponent of 1 right there, right? <clears throat> that's how we get 2 to the fifth. And then um, v to the fifth raised to the fifth is v to the 25th, okay, and 2 to the 5th, if you multiply that out, that's going to be 32, because 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16, and then 16 times 2 is 32, all right? Now this u to the negative 10 comes to the denominator as u to the 10th power, and then v to the 25th. So that's our result, 32v to the 25th over u to the 10th power. Okay? All right, let's see, we'll do a couple more. How about um, this one? T times T to the minus 2 raised to the minus 2 all over T to the minus 5. But why, don't we, why don't you go ahead and pause the video. Try to work this out on your own. Get an answer and then press play again and see if you get the right one. So go ahead and just take a moment Press pause, and um, let's go ahead and see if we get the right answer. All right, so let's see. How can we approach this? Well, that's going to be t, and then we're raising one exponent to another, so we're multiplying, and then the negative times negative is positive. So it's t to the fourth power all over t to the minus fifth, right? Then we're using our product rule, so that's going to be t to the fifth, 1 plus 4 is 5, right, all over t to the negative 5, and then this is going to come up to the numerator as t to the fifth, so t to the fifth times t to the fifth equals t to the tenth power, so that 
should have been your answer. Now, I don't know if you worked it out that way. Um, you could work it out a different way, but t to the 10th. All right? Okay, let's try another one. How about this guy? r to the 4th, s to the minus 3, and then r to the, divided by r to the minus 3, a little clear here, r to the minus 3, and then s to the 7th, all over, or raised to the third power. Okay? So again, why don't you um, press the pause button here and try to work this one out and then hit play when it's done and see if you get the correct result. Alright, so here we go. I could simplify on the inside first and, and I'm going to sort of tend to do that just because order of operations says kind of work inside out so I'll do it that way. So if I just work on the inside right here I am going to rewrite this as r to the fourth times r cubed because this negative exponent is going to the top and then this negative exponent here will be going to the bottom. Okay, so that's divided by um, s to the seventh times s cubed. Alright, and then that's all raised to the third power. Right. So I'm still working on the inside. I'm going to use the product rule. So that's r to the 7th. 4 plus 3 is 7. Over s to the 7 plus 3 is 10. And that's still raised to the third power. Now I'm going to use the power rule. So 7 times 3 is 21. So that's r to the 21. Over 10 times 3 is 30. So s to the 30th. Okay, and that is your result. Now, if you did it a different way and you got the same answer, great. If you didn't get the right answer at all, then you need to go back and see where you made your mistake. Okay? All right. Um, let's, let's do one last one. So we'll do one last problem. Let's write this as minus 2 x squared raised to the negative 3, and that's all over x to the minus 3, y to the fifth. Okay. So again, a lot of different ways you could do this. Um, I'm going to do it this way, which might be a little bit longer, but I, I just kind of want to show you something, because usually what the problem is here is this negative 2 raised to the minus 3. That, that usually causes an issue. So what you want to do when you have a negative number raised to a negative exponent is just put that negative value in parentheses. So we're going to write this as minus 2, right? And that's still raised to the minus third power, all right? And because if you think about it, let me just put this in here in red. That's like a 1 right there, like that. Okay? So, <clears throat> the negative 2 is being raised to the minus third power. That's why I'm writing it in parentheses here to the minus third power. Okay, so then the next one's easy. 2 times minus 3, so that's going to be x. Do this in black. It's going to be x to the minus 6, okay? All over, all right? And I'm just going to put y to the fifth down because I'm going to bring this x to the minus 3. So this x to the minus 3 right here. to the third power, okay? All right, so now let's simplify a little bit 
here. Let's go ahead and number one, we will take this minus two in the denominator, but now it's going to be raised to the third power. We still have our y to the fifth. And then I'm going to simplify these two because they're the same base. That's x to the minus sixth times x cubed. So that's going to be an x to the minus three, right? Okay. And then let's write this as um, one up top because this x to the minus three is going to go down here. All right. So negative two cubed is negative eight. Then we have x cubed. Then we have y to the fifth. All right. And there you have it. Now you could write the negative on the one or the negative out front. I mean, this is the same thing. Now again, there's different ways you you can approach this. Um, in fact, let, let's let's do that just for the heck of it. <coughs> let's do a different approach here. So let me rewrite the problem. So it's minus two x squared um, raised to the negative three, and that's all over x to the minus three y to the fifth. Okay. So let's write this as the x to the minus 3 will go up top. So we have x to the third. Right? Write it as a positive exponent instead of a negative. Then this, this whole thing here is the base raised to the minus 3. So I'll put it down in the denominator as a minus 2x squared, but it's raised to the positive 3, and then we have that y to the fifth, okay? All right, so now let's uh, simplify this. So that's going to be x cubed all over. Well, negative 2 raised to the third power is negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, which is negative 8. And then x squared raised to the third power is x to the sixth, right? You multiply your exponents, so 2 times 3 is 6. And then you have your y to the fifth, right there. Okay, so we're almost done. Notice we have an x cubed and an x to the sixth, right? So we're going to use the um, quotient rule. Now. We didn't run into this before, so I, I should actually bring this up. So if I was just to do this, we know it would be x to the third and then minus 6, right? And then that's all over our negative 8 y to the fifth, okay? That should be a 5 right there. So this <coughs> is going to be x to the negative 3 all over minus 8 y to the fifth. Okay. Well, again, this is a negative exponent. We don't want that, and it has to go to the bottom. So this is going to be a 1 over negative 8 x cubed y to the fifth. And look at this result and this result. Okay, these two. Oops. These two are exactly the same. Okay. Now there is one uh, shortcut that I didn't mention. So notice, um, where is it at? Notice right here. Okay, this part. Let's just let's just say we had an x. Let's just say we had a problem that said x to the third over x to the sixth. Well, what you know, you would take x to the third minus six, right? x to the third power minus six. Okay, so that's going to be x 
to the minus 3, and that's going to be 1 over x cubed. So we know that. So the shortcut that maybe you guys can think about this is because there is, if you imagine this right here, this is x multiplied by itself six times, right? You know that. Okay? And then the numerator is x multiplied by itself three times, right? So three of these x's will cancel out with three of these x's. And notice what you have. You have x cubed, which is right there. So any time you have the larger exponent in the denominator, where is your exponent going to remain? Well, it will remain in the denominator because 6 is more than 3. So if I had, for example, like x to the second over x to the fifth, well, instead of taking 2 minus 5 and then converting that back to a positive exponent, we already know that the x is going to be in the denominator. So you're just going to take the larger value, subtract the smaller value, 5 minus 2 is 3. So it's just going to be 1 over x cubed. Okay. So what I'm getting at is instead of going x to the second minus 5, 2 minus 5 is negative 3, and you know that is 1 over x to the third. It's just a little bit of a shortcut. Okay. So let's, let, let's just do one more to kind of hammer that shortcut home. Let's say I had x squared y to the fifth over x to the seventh and then y squared, right? Well, we know that this is bigger than this right here. So we know it's 5 minus 2 is going to be uh, 3. So it's y cubed, right? But then 2 minus 7 is going to be negative 5. And you know the negative exponent has to go in the denominator. And also because there's more x's down here than there are x's up top, you know the x has to end up in the denominator. So it's just 7 minus 2, which is 5. So it's going to be x to the uh, fifth power there. Okay. And so what's the shortcut? Well, if you work this out, kind of did it the long way, you'd go, well, that's x to the 2 minus 7 is negative 5, and then y to the 5 minus 2 is 3, and then you just have to rewrite this negative exponent as a positive, so that's going to be um, uh, y cubed over x to the fifth. So you just save one step of, of writing this as a uh, negative exponent and then converting it to a positive exponent, all right? So like I said, there's many different ways that you can work out all of these problems. Um, but just really, I, I can't emphasize this enough, write down all of those law of exponents on a, on a separate sheet of paper. And when you're doing that homework, see which one of those you could actually apply to the problem at hand that you're working at, OK? So the next section that we'll cover is, uh, is going to be, uh, what is it, scientific notation. Uh, section 4.3, and that, that deals with some exponents as well, but in a, in a more practical sense, um, dealing with really large and really small numbers. So the next, next section we'll look at is uh, scientific no notation. So make sure you practice these law of exponents. They're extremely, extremely important.